Welcome to The Power of Now What, a podcast on overcoming the various challenges and problems that one encounters when on the spiritual path, when on a spiritual journey, when engaged in a practice or discipline such as meditation, and even post-awakening and post-enlightenment. This is episode 14 on the subject of what to do when the present moment just sucks. I mean, this whole the the presence thing that we do, finding the present moment, keeping our attention and focus entirely on the present moment, it promises peace and tranquility. And a lot of the spiritual practices and disciplines, they often talk about this, this bliss and this peace and this joy that arises from keeping your attention entirely in the present. And it's quite a common barrier to inner peace and quite a common barrier to awakening when we we find that we can understand that it is only ever the present moment and we can experience this and through various practices and disciplines perhaps meditation we find that actually yes i i find it is possible to keep my attention entirely on the now and my mind has started to subside. I I no longer think about the future. I have come to realize that the future is an illusion. And so too is the past. The future can only exist as imagination, as apprehension, as worry, as anxiety, as thoughts. And the past can only really exist as memories and perhaps as, as feelings as well. And this is an enormous relief as you come to this true realization. You go, huh, all this time. And there, there, you do get these moments of total bliss and serenity as the future has fallen away and so is the past. I mean, imagine the, the amount of energy that that saves, the amount of energy that you no longer have to spend worrying about the future, planning the future. And the amount of energy you're going to save by not constantly reassessing and analyzing the past, you only do so in the sort of appropriate amount. And instead, you can focus on enjoying your life within the present moment. And at some point on the spiritual journey, the spiritual path, we really get on board with this. We really begin to live this experience and this understanding. And you begin to notice this curious thing where uh, p- particularly when you're doing your your meditative practice at home you find that staying present does give rise to this deep felt sense of inner peace this deep felt sense of serenity and yes joy love compassion and bliss arises you really start to feel it But there is this nagging doubt at the back of your mind because you very rightly as well, and it's right to question things and it's right to explore and examine these things. You think, well, that's all well and good for now. Now, when when I'm in comfortable surroundings, you know, (laughs) I'm sat on my sofa at home, the door's shut, I've got my phone turned off, I've got no other distractions. The sunlight is beaming in through the windows and I can sit here and stay nice and present and you feel peace and bliss and you think, well, okay, that's great. And I'm glad I'm, I I mean, my previous habit was that I would sit here and worry about the future. I would sit here in a very negative state of mind. But now that I have found this thing called presence and I have found this this practice of presence, I can sit here in bliss. However, this slightly uh, slightly nagging negative voice arises saying, well, that's OK for now. But what do I do when the situation isn't so secure and comfortable and serene? I mean, quite rightly, you would question, well, it's kind of serene anyway. Wouldn't I be feeling kind of peaceful anyway? Anyone can feel kind of peaceful in these situations and circumstances. And you think, well, what am I going to do when I have to go to work? Or what am I going to do when 
like the kids aren't behaving like they're behaving now and so it's easy to stay present but what do I do when they're doing my head in <laughs> what what do I do when there are situations and circumstances that threaten this peace and that's uh, the the query that I wanted to address today because it's a very common one it's a very common barrier to inner peace and actually a lot of people I believe veer away from the spiritual path at that point because maybe they feel like well that that's good enough like okay I I have these periods of peace um but maybe that's just something I reserve for my kind of downtime it's not practical or even it's not effective to practice this presence when I'm at work or I'm in uncomfortable circumstances. But I'm an advocate for saying, no, let's go all the way. Let's go all the way. We're trying to jump over the moon here. And the spiritual path, the true full awakening and the true full enlightenment, let's not forget, is feeling that bliss, serenity, tranquility, joy, love, security and comfort at all all times all times please don't lose sight of that that is what we're trying to come to the realization that it's possible to attain this this deep understanding that it is possible to feel that same tranquility and peace that you feel at home meditating staying present you can feel that at work you can feel that whilst your kids are doing your head in. You can feel that whilst your partner is doing your head in. Uh, Under all circumstances, there will be this background, deep understanding that you are not, in fact, a temporary, finite, separate self subject to the woes and misfortunes of future and past and all of this, but instead, you are the ever-present, infinite, universal consciousness that is always at peace. So how do we address some of the common queries and issues arising around this very reasonable question of what if the present moment sucks? Now, the first thing that I would say is that if there is something in your immediate present moment that is causing you discomfort or is is overly distracting or is getting in the way of your peace and it's relatively easy to rectify it then rectify it it's not a it's not a failure of your spiritual practice to make your surroundings and your body a little more comfortable and there, this is quite an interesting one because they said there are certain disciplines. I mean, Zen is one of them. I, I'm a big fan of Zen, but I do think it does have its downsides because they, they, um, they well, they have a reputation. I'm sure not every Zen school is like this, but they have a reputation for you sit in Zazen for very long periods of time. And even if you get very uncomfortable or even if you experience pain, the point is you just stay with the meditation anyway, regardless. So maybe you're sat in a meditation and, you know, they literally, they will sit and stare at a wall. They have a very specific, Zazen is a very specific practice. They'll sit and stare at a wall and they'll say like, even if you get like leg cramp or something, you just like stick it out or you get really bad back pain or neck pain or something. You just kind of stick it out. And, um, I mean, for a Zen monk, sure, if that's your discipline, that's your practice, crack on. But if we're a bit more of a, uh, maybe more of a casual practitioner, I would say if you're sat meditating and um, you feel particularly uncomfortable physically, just there's there's no harm in shifting your position or finding a different position that's going to be more uh, beneficial, more conducive to your practice. Because I actually believe it would be more egoic to stick it out sometimes because you're trying to uh, stoically like grit your teeth and prove how tough you are to kind of grind through this meditation there might be a place for that absolutely I mean look at the Shaolin monks and stuff they their whole practice and discipline is about like (laughs) toughing in overcoming the ego and 
shedding the limitations of the ego purely through toughening and endurance and strengthening. So there might be a place for that. However, I would say for most people, it would actually be more beneficial. We, you know, we, we've got enough stress in our lives. Don't forget just how painful, stressful the modern world really is. We've got enough stress in our life without adding that added pressure to it. If you've managed to find this 10, 20 minutes to yourself to become present, if your leg hurts, then, you know, get up, move around, shake it off. Um, so that's like on on an internal level. If something about the present moment sucks and you can change it, by all means, change it. That is not a failure of your spiritual practice. And it's not a sign that you're doing something wrong. Absolutely not. However, the uh, the the counterpoint to that is that we we are trying to not distract ourselves also, because if you start getting up and moving around, it's not long until you start thinking, well, as I'm moving around, I might as well sort of put some music on or something or go get a cup of tea as well. If my whole thing here is to make my environment more comfortable for me, it's not long until you've put a movie on and you're you're just right back to distracting yourself from the present moment rather than keeping your focus and attention on the present moment. Meditation isn't isn't relaxation and it's not recreation. Although it can be enormously relaxing and it can be enormously enjoyable, the intention is important. So if we are setting that time aside for the formal practice of meditation, by all means make yourself as comfortable as is reasonable. But uh, be be sure not to be just distracting yourself from the present moment. And uh, a lot of people fall into that trap. It's very, very common. If, we, if we're trying to make it too comfortable, it's not long until we're just distracting ourselves. And that's going to strengthen the ego's attempt to pull our attention away from the present moment. So some discomfort can actually help us just to a reasonable amount. Because, because psychologically as well, your ego is going to be uncomfortable. Like emotionally, that's different. That you're, you, Because it knows that you're turning your attention towards it. And there's going to be some resistance internally. Now that's different. That is going to take some practice and discipline and focus. But I'll be, I'll be getting to that in a moment. So there are two spe- two specific problems uh, when it comes to what if the <laughs> what if the present moment sucks or is uncomfortable. the The first one is what if the present moment contains situations and circumstances that are so uncomfortable that it threatens your ability to stay present, that it threatens your your ability to keep your focus and attention on the the present moment and due to the circumstance it's very difficult to not let your mind wander to the future and the past and and you keep getting lost in the thought stream as a result of the discomfort of the present that's one uh, of the the common problems with this Uh, the second one is maybe perhaps a bit further down the line when you've done a serious amount of practice and you've really got on board with your spiritual discipline and spiritual practice and you find that it's getting so much easier the the state of presence actually becomes your natural state it's it's actually quite difficult to extend your attention towards the future and the past now because you've simply You've done it. (laughs) You've succeeded. You succeeded in your task. You succeeded and you have managed to bring your attention entirely into the present. And yet you don't feel the peace, the bliss and the tranquility that was promised that you you thought was coming. Like, hang on a minute. I'm here now. I'm fully present most of the time and something doesn't feel quite right. And that can lead to feelings of, am I doing it right? Is this right? Am I, am I, is there something I'm missing? Because I do feel present and I get it. And intellectually, I fully understand exactly what this whole presence thing is about. And there are times I feel very peaceful, but 
you think, well, shouldn't shouldn't I be there by now? Where's my where's the awakening? Where's the enlightenment? Where <laughs> like where when do I get that thing? When do I jump over the moon? When when does the when does all this wonderful stuff happening that they kept talking about? Because it it just doesn't feel like it's there. I'm just very present, but I kind of just feel the same way that I've always felt. And I would say maybe that's that's perhaps a little bit later down the line. So to address the first one of what to do if your your ability to stay present is is made a lot more difficult by the circumstances around you. Well, some of that is going to come down purely to just time. It's going to come down purely to simply keep up the practice and keep up the discipline because it that's what a practice and a discipline is it's not going to be um smooth sailing all the way through you're going to hit some turbulence in the in the early days it's just like when when you go to a gym to to get stronger physically um you know you don't go straight to the straight to the heavy weights you know you stay in the stay in the lighter section to begin with and so you've built up a decent level of strength and then you can uh, start working your way up the dumbbell rack, sort of, so to speak. And it's the same with anything. If you imagine like your first day at a job or something like that, you feel nervous. You don't know what to do. Um, it doesn't feel particularly comfortable because you don't know what's coming. You don't know what to expect. You feel like you're good at certain areas of your job, but other areas need need improvement. And that is that that's just one of the ways that we learn so in the early days when you find that you can stay very present and peaceful in certain circumstances but not in others well that's just a normal part of the process essentially and the more you practice this the more situations and circumstances that happen um and you find that you can hold on to an element hold on's definitely the wrong word there sorry let me run that back <laughs> the more you can remain embedded in the in the understanding and the experience of presence despite the external circumstances then the deeper this realization is going to go and you're essentially that's how you're building up that spiritual muscle so to speak but also here on this you can there, there is a very deep intuition and insight that starts to arise here, and it, you got got to just just be very aware, very intuitive, and very mindful of this inner dialogue that happens, where we where wherever you feel like you're failing or wherever you feel like you're not doing a good enough job, whenever that particular feeling arises in you. It's worth analyzing your inner world at that point, because a lot of people suffer with this and this feeling of I'll never get it and I'm not good enough and I can't do it because I keep getting it wrong. No, 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 no. Let's change the perspective, change the way we're looking at this. Think about how spiritually advanced you have become when you have become aware that it's harder to stay present in certain circumstances. Imagine the level of insight that that takes. The intuition and insight there is phenomenal, phenomenal. So it's a massive sign that you're doing something right. If you find that your, your ability to stay present is diminished in certain circumstances, don't feel like a failure. Don't feel like you're doing it wrong or you're not on the right path. Actually, that's a sign you're doing something right. You have become aware that you are losing your ability to stay present. Now, whenever your awareness has increased, that is a true sign that something is going very, very right. Because awareness is key. Awareness is key for improving all areas and aspects of your life. You can only fix a problem if you're aware that the problem is there. And a large part of our spirituality and our meditative practice and discipline is turning up the light of awareness. So any time 
any time that you have become aware that there is a problem, we should do a victory lap. <laughs> you should really, you should really say that's good. That's a good thing that you have become aware that something isn't right. And it's 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 kind of tragic. It really is tragic that a lot of people fall off of the path because they feel like, oh, I'm not I'm not getting it right. I keep losing presence and feel like they're getting it wrong. But no, no, that you've done something right there. If you understand that you're losing presence, well, firstly, that shows that you understand what presence is and you understand the mechanism by which you lose presence. That's massive. That's huge. So that's the first thing I would say about uh, it, that that particular scenario and situation. You feel like your presence keeps getting, keeps getting, uh, you you keep getting distracted from the present moment by the external circumstances. Don't get frustrated by it. There's no need to get. It's it's the ego that's frustrated. Infinite universal consciousness doesn't get frustrated because. It, it has all the time in the world, you know, it's infinite. It doesn't have a finitude, it is infinite. So it doesn't, uh, it, it's got all the time in the world to um, to come to the true full understanding. And don't, yeah, there's, there's no need to um, be frustrated by, I mean, you can go whole days in the early days, you might be present and do your 10 minute meditation in the morning, get nice and present and go right. I'm going to be present all day today. (laughs) And then the moment you clock in at work, you lose it completely. And you go all day caught up in a frantic, stressed out thought stream. And then you get to the end of the day, clock out and go, man, I didn't stay present at all today. (laughs) And uh, it can be demoralizing and it can be disheartening. But the fact that you became aware of it is the key. Imagine what would happen if you had no understanding imagine what would happen if you had no spiritual discipline no spiritual practice whatsoever you would never become aware that you're losing your ability to stay present that you're lose that that you have spent a period of time lost in thoughts most people spend their entire lives lost in this thought stream their entire lives go by they miss out on their entire lives because they're caught up in their stream of thoughts. So, yeah, don't lose heart if you find that you keep getting distracted. It's not as big a deal. The ego wants to make out that that's a big deal. The ego is is what's trying to then slip in there and say, you're not good enough. You'll never get this. Or just that this isn't possible. It's not, it's, <coughs> sorry. So it's, the ego will obviously try to build up a case against this whole meditative practice thing. And so every time that you spend a period of time, oh, I couldn't stay present today, your ego goes, aha, see, see, I told you, you couldn't do it. I told you this whole thing's a load of rubbish. I told you that it's not possible to stay present at all times. And if you're not careful, you'll go along with that and go, oh yeah, I guess that's right. No, 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 go the other way with it and say, well, yeah, but actually, actually, if we look at this deeply, deeply, you spent all day, all day lost in a stream of thoughts, thinking of future and thinking of past. And then you realized what had happened. You bring your attention back to the present moment and you go, huh, well, where did that whole day just go? It's gone. It's, it's already over you return your attention back to the present moment and realize it's always ever now. It's only ever now. What a huge victory that is. You were lost all day and then you brought your attention back to the present moment. That, that The power, the sheer, the power of that is staggering. Never lose sight of that. It might not always feel it. You might not suddenly get that elation and that rush of peace and joy, but just keep allowing that sense of groundedness to keep growing, keep growing and realize no matter how many times that I lose this thing called presence, no matter how many times I lose my peace, I always find my way back. And the more you do this, the more you practice this, the quicker you will return to this state of peace. 
and you will catch yourself more often. You feel your attention slipping towards future and past. You feel it happening. You bring yourself back to the present. You become aware that you're lost in the stream of thoughts. You bring yourself back to the present. The more often this happens, the more you naturally align yourself with the present and the more the more it begins to happen automatically, which is what we what we want, right? <laughs> we want to stop having this exhausting back and forth between myself and the ego and the presence and the future and all of this. We want it to just be automatic that we remain embedded in presence at all times. And that's what's coming. So if you find that you keep getting lost, just keep bringing your attention back to the present. And this is a good sign. I will uh, add in as well here that uh, it is often necessary to allow your thoughts to go to the future. Because let's say you are at work and um, you get a call saying that, uh, I don't know, you're, you're kids sick at school and needs like picking up or something so you're, you're going to need to engage the planning part of your mind in order to kind of arrange and organize things but the key the key is to stay present even whilst you're thinking of those plans and making arrangements for the future and not identifying so much with the the sense of being an individual, temporary, finite, separate self whilst you're doing so. There's no stress needed to plan. You can stay present whilst planning and making arrangements. Because in the egoic state, you get that call coming in saying, oh, it's, uh, you know, your, your kid's sick and will need picking up. You will feel this stress and panic and worry rising up because you think, well, how am I going to do that? I don't have the resources to fix this what are they going to think it work if I need to go home early um that child care that I need to call up oh I've been I've been using them quite often recently are they gonna what are they gonna say what if that doesn't work and we get lost in all of this franticness and this worry and stress but if you stay present you just do one thing at a time and you just slowly gradually make your arrangements and you just slowly and gradually just do each right thing until you've put something in place and a deep sense of groundedness and assuredness just comes in because also because the more we become present the more the depth of our love and compassion rises up for others and for ourselves let's say that particular scenario did happen i'm going to lock in on that scenario now because it's a it's a good one it's a common one you know it's a banger that one it happens all the time what do How's spirituality going to help me in that very specific circumstance? So the, your child is sick. You need to, let's say you attempt to find some child care for it and you, you can't. You, there's nobody available to take care of this, but that your child needs picking up from school. Now, your ego is going to be worried about what's work going to think if I have to now leave work at very short notice because I need to go look after my kid. But infinite universal consciousness, quite securely and in a very assured way, thinks, no, my child's health is far more important. My child's mental well-being is far more important than work. And I don't care what my manager thinks and I don't care what anyone thinks about that. I'm going to go pick my kid up. And there, there's a growing sense in you that you just always do the right thing when you're being very present. When you're, if you're locked in ego, you might think, no, there's no way I can possibly get away from work because I don't want, want my manager and my team to, uh, to think poorly of me so you ring the school back and say no you're just gonna have to keep the kid there until until it's home time and um that's not the right thing to do is it we know that it's not um that's just one very specific scenario there so i also the this second problem that happens of and this is the one i'm going to address a little bit more deeply because that first one is more of an early stage one and just the more you practice presence that problem very very quickly just becomes a total non-issue 
because <clears throat> because presence is done for you. It's only ever the present moment anyway. So the more you stick with it, the more you naturally just align with the reality of the situation, which is that it's only ever now anyway. Now, on to this second problem of what if I am very present a lot of the time, but I, I just don't seem to feel this inner peace, this joy and this bliss. So what is happening? Because sometimes the present moment just sucks for me. And no matter how much I stay present with it, no matter how much I just breathe into it, no matter how much meditation I do, I still feel suffering. I still feel suffering despite the fact that I'm very present. So let's take a look at what's happening there. So there are many aspects to staying present and spirituality, meditative practice and discipline that need to be deeply understood. It's not just about staying present, although ultimately that is the ultimate goal and all of these problems will completely disappear once, you, once you're truly there. But some deeper understandings and insights are necessary in order to be fully established in the peace of presence, the peace of being, the joy of being. And the first one is acceptance. Acceptance is key. So we, we have to really get to grips with this concept of acceptance because within the present moment, there are often circumstances that are less than desirable uh, externally and internally. And it's important to, to truly understand that it's our resistance to the, the discomfort of the present moment that actually <laughs> caused all the problems to begin with that actually caused the, the, the ego to start springing up. The ego, in many ways, is a defense mechanism. Our sense of being an individual, temporary, finite self is a response. It's almost a trauma response to the trauma of, of being alive in the first place. It's a trauma response to, to the, the horrors of life. And so we set up this delusional state of mind in order to try and cope. And so when we try to bring ourselves into the present and find that a lot of the, the present moment is quite uncomfortable and almost unbearable at times, we find it very difficult to just accept fully what's happening in the here and now. And because it's not our habit, our habit is to, to try and change. We is either our, our habitual response to discomfort is either to change what's happening or to, to distract ourselves and get away from what's happening. Now, I know I, I, I'm contradicting myself here because in the, in the early part of this talk, I said if something is uncomfortable, you might as well move and, and uh, like you make yourself a bit more comfortable. That doesn't strengthen the ego. That's natural. That's reasonable. I'm talking on more of a, more of a, a deeper sort of level about our the resistance to the present moment. It's often our our circumstances and, and situation that we're resisting. So we might try and sit in meditation, but we find it difficult because we feel like it's very uncomfortable because in your mind, you're like, but I've got 101 things to do. My life situation and my, my circumstances are such that I need to be working with 100% effort, 100% of the time, to try and fix this life situation and my circumstances only to only to realize in meditation there are no circumstances there is no situation the circumstances and situation is a product of your mind it's imagination it's not real <laughs> there is nothing happening this is the this is the crucial understanding in presence what you're suffering from is a projection of the mind 99% of the time 
Obviously, the leg cramp is different. Get up and move. But most of the time, what we're suffering from is a, an illusory projected reality that simply does not exist. It's just not there. You're sat in meditation and you're thinking, yeah, but tomorrow I have to send this email and I have to send this email and how am I going to word it? And, oh, what if I'm tired of all these emails? How's uh, I, I send emails all the time. They only ever stress me out. And this is insanity. That is total insanity to be sat at home, perfectly comfortable, perfectly at peace, but you cannot settle because your mind is projecting all of this stress, worry, and anxiety into you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is nothing less than insanity. And we say, oh, yeah, but that's normal. Everyone does that. Again, just because something is normal doesn't mean that it's sane. And just because something is normal doesn't mean that it's healthy. And just because something is normal doesn't mean that it's mandatory. It doesn't mean that it you, you have to live your life like this. There are other options. Imagine if you could be so present that these thoughts didn't bother you anymore. Oh, this email that I have to send tomorrow. What? Like, it that thought comes into the field of awareness and just disappears immediately because it knows it's not going to be able to get your attention because your attention is focused entirely on the present moment. Your attention is focused entirely on the here and now. That's how deeply grounded in presence you will become as you awaken. There, there, there is no email. This is ridiculous. There's no such thing as an email. We made it up. We made it up. It's just light on a screen. That's how pathetic and ridiculous this, the, the Maya, the illusory the illusory matrix world out there is. It's just light on a screen. But people get so, so invested and identified with this life situation and circumstance that, that it stresses people out to the point of getting sick. People actually get sick from this. And it's tragic. It's nothing less than tragic that we can get so sick and worried and stressed out about this total nonsense, total fabrication, that email is only as important as you think it is. So much of our life situation and circumstance, it's only as important as you think it is. It's not important at all. I was supposed to be talking about acceptance here. I've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> acceptance is about accepting this so-called life situation and circumstance that you're resisting or you feel like a lot of people feel a lot of pressure that I've got to fix this. I've got to get things right. I've got to, I've got to predict and put things in place for the infinite number of things that can go wrong. Instead of all of that, instead of all of that, what if you could just accept the present moment as it is now, fully accept it? Nothing to fix, nothing to change, nothing to do, nothing to improve, no way you have to be, no way you have to go. Whatever needs to be done will get done. Whatever needs to be changed will change in time. Just this, this acceptance is so powerful at eroding the ego. It's so powerful at eroding this relentless need to control the world around us and to defend ourselves. But if we pull it into acceptance and maybe a level of just faith is a loaded word, but just an, a level of faith that life takes care of life all will be well. After all, everything has been well so far, hasn't it? You're still here. Everything's the sun continues to rise and fall. The moon sails across the sky. The clouds come and go up, down, left, right. People still do whatever they do. 
Yes, you're going to have a bad day at work. You have a bad day at work. You have a good day at work. Oh, my kid's sick. Oh, my kid's well. My kid's doing badly at school. My kid's doing well at school. Oh, I didn't get that promotion. Oh, I did get that promotion. Oh, my health is poor. Oh, my health is better. Oh, my relationship's not so good. Oh, I've got no relationship. Oh, I have a relationship. <laughs> like Everything just continues to flow. Have you ever noticed this? It's the same thing over and over again. And we all have the same issues, the same problems. They, they all fall into the same categories. And it's just a, a constant flow, a fluctuating pattern. What if we could just get a line with this? Lao Tzu said, nature is in no hurry, and yet everything is accomplished. <laughs> Isn't that great? Couldn't we... Couldn't we apply that same level of acceptance to ourselves, our lives, and to the present moment? There is no hurry. Everything's good. Everything's fine. And acceptance also frees up a huge amount of energy, the energy that we were using to resist so much. So perhaps there's something about our life situation or circumstance that has been bugging us for a while. Perhaps it's a health thing, something in the body, something, or maybe it is something in our life situation and circumstance, such as maybe like a, a relationship thing, maybe either a family relationship or a friendship or a romantic thing or something at work. One of these things that you, maybe you've you've made some attempts to rectify or change or improve or heal something, but it's not really worked. And you've tried everything. And you've tried everything. You know, you, you, there's, you've got this problem in your life. It's causing you some suffering. You've tried everything to fix it. The only sane thing to do if you've tried everything to fix something is accept it. We have to come to that point. If you want to find true inner peace and you just feel this sense of, Oh, okay. You just you just come to accept, right? You just know on a deep intuitive level, I've tried everything. I've tried to fix this. I've tried to sort this out. It's not worked. I'm going to I'm going to go into the fallback position of true total radical acceptance. The other the person that you're struggling with, they're not going to change. They're just not the, the health thing that you've got going on, that's not going anywhere. Okay, right. Well, then that that's it then, isn't it? I've tried. It's not changed. Maybe the work situation, you just come to that realization that uh, it's it, it, I've, I've done everything to fix this. It's not going to happen. Allow yourself the space of acceptance to just say, oh, well, I, it just is what it is then, isn't it? And you'll find a lot of these things then disappear. Once it's accepted, it's no longer a problem. It, it's just another facet of life. Similar to if if it's raining outside, if it's bad weather outside, you don't stress out because you feel responsible for it. You don't stress out and feel, God, I really need to do something about these clouds. <laughs> I really shouldn't have let this happen. It's the same insanity. That is the we, we know that's mad. We can laugh at that right? We can laugh at that. If somebody was to look up at the, the clouds in the sky and go, God, I really, I really shouldn't have let this happen. I can't believe I've let this happen. And I'm so rubbish as a person because I haven't thought of a way to rectify this. I haven't thought of a way to fix the bad weather. What an awful person I am. What a failure. How incompetent I am. I must be a real fool. I must be an idiot because I cannot move the clouds from out of the sky. Now, we can laugh at that because we know how insane that sounds. But that's exactly what we do when we worry and stress about 99% of our life situation. There is nothing you can do. It's all just happening. Everything is happening because even when, when you come to a very deep level of awakening and realization, you realize that even your responses to it, there's not much you can do about that either. You are trying to fix it. And, and maybe you even, I mean, this is really, really 
it's, it's quite difficult to talk about. It's quite difficult to explain it at a certain level of awakening, but you can come to this level of acceptance that there's a problem in a so-called problem in your situation or circumstance. And you know that it can't be fixed, but you also know that you can't not try to fix it. You know that you're going to do what you can to try and fix the problem, even though you know that the problem can't be fixed. And you have come to accept even that. Even that can be accepted. That I know this situation won't change. I know that it can't be fixed. I know that I'm going to try anyway, and I know that the trying is kind of futile, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway, because that's just what humans do. That's the way our brains work. That's the way our body works. I'm just going to do that as well, even that. And so this level of peace is unshakable, because no matter what you do, you know that that sense of infinite universal consciousness behind everything is always at peace, just watching, smiling, always. Nature is in no hurry. And yet it takes care of everything. And nature is in no hurry. And yet everything is accomplished. And so back to the analogy of the, the bad weather, you wouldn't look at the bad weather and say, God, I'm, I'm a failure for that bad weather being there. No, you accept that the bad weather is there. And then once you've accepted it, it's no longer bad weather. It's just weather the same as when it's a sunny day or when it's raining, when it's snowing, when it's lightning, when it's grey, when it's bright, when it's warm, when it's cold. Yes, there are some things we'd prefer over others, but it's all just weather and you have nothing to do with any of it. So coming to acceptance is when you realise this, is when you truly get to grips with understanding it's all just weather weather. So to the specific problem of what if I can stay present, but I don't feel at peace, understand that even when the body and mind is not at peace, it's just weather. It's the body and mind can be uncomfortable. That's fine. It doesn't have to, it doesn't change consciousness. It doesn't change your awareness. It doesn't change your ability to observe and be aware of the present moment. Through acceptance, you elevate your consciousness to the point of you don't mind what you're conscious of. I'm, I, all, I, all I need to fall back into is being aware of what is happening now. With no, if, I, if, if you don't place an opinion or a judgment on anything, then it doesn't matter what's happening in the present. It no longer affects you. It no longer bothers you because it's just weather. You just notice, oh, it's raining today. You don't go, oh, it's raining today and I'm going to be sad about that. You just notice, oh, it's raining today. And so it's the same when we're either meditating or trying to stay present throughout the day. You notice, oh, it's a stressful day today. It's a busy day today. You don't, and then you don't get sad about that. This interrupts so many negative loops in our mind. It interrupts the anxiety loop. It interrupts the stress loop. And because you don't add any more suffering to the discomfort that's already present. Because it's it's our resistance to the discomfort of the present that causes the suffering. Now, it might still be uncomfortable. Sometimes there's not really much we can do about that. Sometimes. You know, it's like the like the cloud in the sky, the weather. There's not much you can do about that. Well, there's nothing you can do about that. When we come to that point, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. Relax. <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that. You know, the people are gonna people are gonna people. <laughs> people are gonna do that people thing that people do. You know that annoying people thing that people do when they go around peopling everywhere and they people all the way up and down the street and then they people <laughs> These people send through people messages on your phone and they send you people emails and you, you have to go hang out with people and then there aren't enough people and then there aren't, there aren't people, there aren't enough people in your life and then the people in your life aren't peopling properly. They're peopling all wrong. 
and they need to people better and you need to people better. I'm, am I a good people? Am I peopling right? Or am I, <laughs> am I personing correctly? <laughs> <laughs> sorry i laugh too much at my own jokes apparently i can't help it sorry because <laughs> it's the first time i'm hearing them as well <laughs> so am i personing correctly oh no i'm not personing did i person properly today did i did i person properly today or not did i person did i am i am i personing enough to be considered people are the people around me all personing properly and I'm the only person who isn't personing right? Are the, would I have better people in my life if I personed properly and personed to the point where I became a proper people? And if I became a proper people, then I would be around the other proper people and not around the people that aren't peopling personably <laughs> because I need to person in a personable way in order to people properly. But these people are always peopling through you and they're sending you people messages and people emails. And um, I think you get the point. <laughs> the whole thing is utterly insane, utterly insane, utterly ridiculous. Because when we come to the true level of acceptance and awakening, you realize that whatever that uh, these people are doing, it's just weather. They're just going to do what they do. Life will take care of life. Just come into a place of acceptance. And you will find that with this flow that begins to happen, because you start aligning with infinite universal consciousness, you start to act in a far calmer, more rational, more reasonable way. And as a side, as a side effect of this, life becomes a lot smoother. Now, it's crucial to understand this. That's a side effect. It doesn't matter if that happens or not. Because if you try to make your life smoother by staying present, you're just falling into the same old trap. It's the same problem. The same problem over and over again. That's it. So if you attempt to improve your life by staying present, you've missed the point. Stay present. Your life will improve naturally, but don't worry if it doesn't. Just let everything be. You will notice that you are acting in a far calmer, more reasonable way. And you just notice it's, it is like it's like taking your hands off the wheel and realizing that the car is driving itself. That is what true acceptance feels like. The next understanding that we have to really get with, and this this is we're getting into very deep understanding here. We're going we're we're really drinking the Kool Aid on this one. We're following the white rabbit all the way down the rabbit hole here. We come to understand there is no future. Okay, in presence, there's no such thing. It never arrives. So relax. There's no such thing. It's not coming. There's no such thing. There's no past. So we can we can let go of that. And what that leaves us with is the idea that it's now the present moment. Now, we have to also understand there's no present moment either. Now, that sounds very paradoxical. And by the way, the ego cannot stand a paradox. The, the sense of being uh, the neocortex, the individual temporary finite self cannot stand a paradox, but infinite universal consciousness loves a paradox because it's the whole, it's the yin and the yang resolved. It's the, it's the resolution. That's paradox is unity because it's the, it's the resolution, the up, the down, the left, the right, the male, the female, it's all resolved into one uh, paradox. I mean, it's it's a when when two opposing things both both reveal themselves to be correct then the true nature of reality reveals itself and so there's no present moment either because if there's no future and no past there can't be a present moment either because present moment implies time implies time 
and a trap that people fall into. So here we're, we're looking today at this specific problem of what if I am present, but I don't feel at peace. Here's what can be happening. You're trying to wedge yourself in to an infinitely small present moment of time and you find it can't be done. It's like you're trying to inhabit the time between seconds. And it's this almost claustrophobic feeling of trying to hold on to a singular molecule thin moment of time, a one dimensional plane of existence that you're trying to sort of slot to yourself into. That's not the right approach. That's it's that's the the ego attempting to maneuver itself into the present moment and it can't be done because there's no such thing as the present moment. The now is infinite. So time becomes completely irrelevant. That's the point. There's no such thing. It's the it's always been now. It's just now. We can't even say it's only been one now because one implies zero, but there's never been a zero. There's never been a zero or a one. There's a one and a zero at the same time. It's all just now. That's it. That's the nature of reality. And when we're we're trying to sort of stay present, we can fall into the trap of trying to grasp and hold on to the present moment. We're trying to, to, it just becomes another object of attachment. We're trying to attach ourselves to the present moment. And you've got to watch that the ego is very clever. The ego will slip in here very subtly and go, yes, we're doing this really well now. <laughs> we're, we're nailing this. We're nailing this presence thing, aren't we? We're doing a great job because we are really holding on to this present moment. And all these idiots, all these all these peoples, peopling around me, they're doing this future thing and this past thing, but we're being clever and grasping hold of the present moment. If you ever feel like you're holding, you're grasping on, you're attaching to the present or trying too hard, putting too much effort in to staying present, something's something's gone amiss something's gone awry and that's why you're not feeling the peace and the bliss because the peace and the bliss is the letting go letting go there's no present moment either no future no past don't worry about the present don't worry about the present just leave it it's all already happening everything's already happening everything's been taken care of it's all happening now everything that has existed, has ever existed, that ever will exist, is now. Now. There's there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing you have to do. Nowhere you have to go. You don't have to change the now. You don't have to hold on to the now. You don't even have to find the now. You don't even, late in late stage, when we get to this awakening, you realize you can't even pay attention to the now that doesn't make sense either. It's only ever now. Let go. Let go of the whole thing. Just just fall away completely. Completely. Disappear. It, and you'll find it can't disappear. This is the paradox. It, the, it Disappear completely and you find that everything remains. It's all still here unfolding in a beautiful, wonderful, marvellous way enjoyable play really quite quite something it's very mysterious it's a very mysterious place to get to i mean what is all this what is all this stuff that's happening right in front of our eyes why is it it's all automatic your heart is beating your thoughts come and go your your body comes and goes it it everything moves about it's odd and the more you let go even of the present moment the more you realize that you can relax, you can finally find this peace. And that's where the bliss starts to come in. Because you no longer feel so responsible. Again, like in exactly the same way that we wouldn't beat ourselves up about it being a rainy day. I bet there are people that do. 
you know, this is how this is how neurotic and insane the world's become. There are probably people who do blame themselves if the weather's not good. <laughs> but it, you even start to apply that to many areas of your own life because you realize there is nothing that you can do. You just deeply understand. If there's something I can change, I will change it. But even that, I, I mean, I can't even... I can't even choose not to try and change it. I will I will try and change it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you just notice the whole thing is just playing itself out. Infinite universal consciousness isn't responsible for any of this. Remember the bliss and peace and joy of being a child. Do you know why you felt so peaceful and blissful? Because you had no responsibilities. You didn't feel responsible for anything. Even or just the, the whole thing was just all you were there to do is learn and enjoy. That was it. That's the peace and bliss. And it, even when the bad things happen and the terror happens and the fear and all of that, it's all just it's part of it. It's all just normal and natural and you're not really responsible for it. That's the same place we get to when we're an adult now. Do not misunderstand me. I am not saying that we shouldn't take steps to improve our lives. You should. You absolutely should. I've I've made massive changes to my real practical body mind life, and it has been nothing but a good thing. You absolutely should do those things. I'm not saying just leave the whole thing. That's not how it works. It's not it's not that you can suddenly go off on crazy drug and drinking binges and just go and book a hundred holidays and quit your job and do whatever you like. It doesn't work like that. That's the ego. That's the ego. It's got peace and bliss has nothing to do with pleasure. And the more you align with infinite universal consciousness, the more you realize that actually you, you naturally become more responsible because you just start making the right choices naturally. You no longer want to drink or do drugs. You no longer want to sleep with the wrong people. You no longer need to go on holiday every year because you're always on holiday. You no longer feel like being irresponsible because you're no longer in rebellion to the world. You're no longer resisting. Um, a, a lot of the time, people don't realize that it's their ego. They feel like they're rebelling against the world, but it's actually just the ego that's trying to aggrandize itself in many ways, trying to say, no, I've got a better way of doing life. I've, I've thought of a better way. And actually, it's the world outside that's wrong, but I've got a better way. That's the ego, that sense of rebellion. But it's the when, when we fully align with the infinite universal consciousness, the ego has to diminish and dissolve and you naturally fall in line with the right choices. And yes, there's that sense of individuality, the right choices as it pertains to you. You don't need to impress people anymore. You don't need to be validated by people anymore. You don't really care about any of that anymore. You just do the right thing for you. And by doing the right thing for you, you automatically do the right thing for other people as well. You just do. But <laughs> getting back to the fact there is no present moment either. So yeah, this is a this is something that it's it, it's quite difficult to get your head around after you've been doing some practice for a while because it's all been about focus attention on the present, focus attention on the present, which is good. It's a very good stage. Eventually, you start to realize that actually regardless of where you put your attention and your focus, it's only ever the present moment anyway. And then if there's no future and no past, then what is this thing called the present? The present moment isn't a series of, uh, it's not like a series of present moments. It's just one present moment that is infinitely evolving. So don't try to cram yourself into a tiny one dimensional plane of existence <laughs> let go and relax and that's where the peace and the bliss of being begins to seep into the now whereas before you might not have been feeling that peace because there was a tension a tension as you tried to grasp and hold on to the now and don't forget the the 
I, I think a lot of the time people the the present moment I, I I tend to see the awakening process as like almost two phases and the beginning is the concept of becoming present bringing our attention <laughs> bringing our recognition and understanding into this the the erosion of the belief in a future and a past and aligning yourself with the infinite universal now and if we're not feeling the peace and bliss this is this might it's good so once you're established in that presence established in the present moment but we're not feeling the bliss the fact we're not feeling the bliss is probably a sign it's time to take it to the next level stay fully in the understanding the immersion in the now and as we take it into the next level, which is that you are infinite universal consciousness, that this thing called the ego isn't real, that y- your name is just words. Your whole life story is just a story. Your whole belief system are just thoughts and feelings. All of this, it's hang on a minute. It's that sense of wait a minute. I'm starting to get it. All of these numbers that have been attached to me for so long, my age, my height, my weight, my salary, my money, my my address, all of these numbers, they're not real. Everything that has happened throughout my entire life is a single thought. And if I choose not to engage with that single thought, where did my entire life just go? Huh. And if there's no such thing as the future, what am I worried about? Oh, it turns out there's nothing to worry about. And so... It, it, it's, it's crucial to, to understand the illusory nature of the ego. That's what the ego is. We'll term that the ego. That's what many traditions term this, that the, the narrative, the internal story that you're constantly opening and reanalyzing, reassessing, that is not real. You can close the book, put it to one side, just enjoy the now. So that does leave us with the question, so what am I then? If I'm not my name, if I'm not my history, I'm not my future, I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my feelings. Well, you are that which is aware, consciously aware and experiencing everything that is happening within this present moment. Because everything else comes and goes. It's temporary. It rises and falls, comes and goes comes into the field of awareness, stays a while, and then is gone. But the awareness never goes. The consciousness never goes. And that's you. That's you. So, the peace and bliss of being is there. It's the awareness. It's the consciousness. Don't worry about what you're aware of. Don't worry about what the what the experience contains instead just keep pulling that attention back and back and back anything that arises when you're deep in meditation anything that arises it's a sense of saying nope i'm not buying it not buying it not buying it not buying it all of it whatever comes up whatever comes up body mind world all of it thoughts feelings yeah this that the other doesn't matter just remain as the pure conscious awareness itself with nothing added totally unmixed unmixed and this is where the peace and the bliss comes in because it is like waking up from a nightmare it's that feeling and if you're not experiencing that if you're not experiencing that relief if you're not experiencing the peace and the bliss don't give up. Don't give up because it's coming. It's coming. And just be aware of what we're trying to do here. We're trying, I keep saying, keep, we're trying to jump over the moon. That's, we're trying to really do this. Don't underestimate the, the promise of what we're achieving here. It's true liberation, true awakening. Really do it really do it go all the way 
I know it sometimes feels a bit too good to be true. Okay. So, well, can I, what, I can just be completely free of all my problems? Yes. Yes. That is what we're saying. That is what we are saying. You can be free from all of it. And if you're not feeling that peace and that bliss, it's because you're still identifying with the ego. You still believe that you are the story. To use the analogy of the actor on the stage, that's what the ego is. The actor on the stage who has forgotten that they are an actor. They have gotten so lost in the play. In many ways, they've done their job perfectly. They've become so immersed. They've lost themselves in the play so completely that they forgot they are an actor on a stage. Wake up. Wake up. Realize deeply it was a play the whole time. The whole thing is a total illusion, a fabrication, a beautiful fabrication, a necessary fabrication, a fun fabrication, but a fabrication nonetheless. Drop the mask. Stop the play. Return to being the actor, to understanding that you are not the character, you are the actor. Pull it all the way back. Realize that you're watching a horror movie, but you've gotten so invested in the story, so invested in the story, you forgot you're watching a movie. And that's why you feel terror. That's why you feel despair and hopelessness, because it's a horror movie. Instead, now it's time to remember, oh, it was just a film. It's just a story. Turn it off. That's where the relief and bliss comes in. And I believe a lot of people are missing this. I'm, I have massive respect for any spiritual discipline, any practice, any belief system, all of it. It's all good stuff. Everything's good. We're all climbing the mountain. It's just in very different ways and we'll all make it to the top eventually. But I do believe, particularly in modern spirituality, that a lot of people are completely missing the point. <laughs> they just are. I mean... A lot of these so-called spiritual paths are just the ego attaching to more objects. And, and people aren't feeling the bliss. People aren't feeling the relief, the bliss, the comfort and the joy of being. Because no one's told them. No one's pointed it out. Every now and then someone just has to come along, tap you on the shoulder and say, mate, the, um, are you aware the play is over? You're still acting. Now, it, it, the actor's still on the stage running around going, no, 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 you don't understand. I've got, to do, I've got to do all of this. I've got all these problems and everything. And their friend is just saying, um, no, 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 no. You, you're a bit confused. You're, you're, it, it's over. It's over. The play's over. And when you can drop the mask and you can drop the play and drop the act, finally, finally, we can come to this bliss, which is total serenity, empty, empty. It will stun you when you feel it. Uh, th there's, no, there's no words that can describe it. There really aren't. I wish I could. The only, the only words I could use to describe it would probably make me sound a little insane. And I don't want <laughs> to come across like that. So, but the, the only way that I could... I still, I want to give some reassurance and remind people of what we're trying to get to here. Don't give up. Don't sell yourself short. Don't say, don't settle. Don't settle for, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll just be a bit present sometimes, but mostly my life really sucks. No, don't do that. Instead, let's go all the way. Let's make it to the top of the mountain. Let's jump over the moon. It's total bliss. Total serenity. Because it doesn't matter what happens, the true depth of the reality of existence is firmly, permanently established. Infinite, peaceful, universal consciousness. So, 
That's a few pointings on what to do if the present moment totally sucks. There's a few uh, just understandings and insights that might be needed there. The final thing that I would say is that as your awareness grows, you might find this turbulence of you just start to notice some things in your life that probably could do with some readjustment because you've been acting as an ego this entire time, your entire life. And partly what the ego does is mask and delude and distract from some of the more difficult problems in your life. And I wish I could make it any easier team, but I can't. I wish I could make it easier for you, but I can't. It's part of it. As you become more naturally aligned with being present, and you're happier and calmer and less frantic and stressed, you will notice 10 times more all of the people around you that are not so helpful, that are not so peaceful, that are not so well-intentioned. You'll notice all of the areas in your life, all of the decisions that you've made thus far, believing that you're an ego, believing that you're an individual, temporary, finite, separate self, You've made all of the decisions in your life based on that belief. And now that belief is slowly, 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 sometimes quickly, eroding and falling away. When that all falls away, naturally, you're going to feel quite uncomfortable as you realize your job doesn't work for you. The relationship doesn't work for you. The situation just doesn't work. And we can accept all of the bits that we can't change. That's fantastic. That's lovely. Or maybe maybe now you can really, as the ego falls away, you can understand that th- these areas of your life cause you pain and you're going to stick with it because that's just, that's where you're at. There's no harm in that. Maybe you can bring some positivity and love and joy into it anyway. But the point here is that sometimes we feel this, The para again, paradox. The ego hates paradox. Infinite universal consciousness loves paradox. As you grow in peace, you become more aware of everything around you that doesn't bring you peace, right? And as you become more aware of those things around you that don't bring you peace, it's easy to misinterpret what's happening. Sometimes you feel a bit worse almost because you've become aware, but it's necessary. It's necessary. It's a necessary part of the process. As you become aware, as your awareness increases, your consciousness increases, you become aware of the issues around you. Naturally, that could lead to stress and worry. Wisdom is needed. Some wisdom and realize, ah, this is good. This is a good thing. It's like when you get sick, when the symptoms of sickness, the symptoms of illness are actually your body's immune system fighting off the virus. Now, the symptoms are uncomfortable, but the symptoms are a sign that your immune system is doing its job. Okay? So, when you become very present and your ego is falling away and you become aware of things that aren't so good, Don't get stressed or frustrated by this. It's understandable to be stressed and frustrated by it, but understand that the awareness of the pain is like the immune system taking care of the virus. And what you're feeling, this discomfort that you can feel, is actually a symptom of infinite universal consciousness clearing the viruses out of your life. That's why the present moment sometimes sucks. (laughs) Don't worry if it sucks, team. Don't worry. It happens. It does happen. Uh, And also become very aware of all of the times that you do feel the bliss and the peace. Imagine what would have happened if you never found this understanding, if you never found the spiritual path that you found. Every present moment would suck. And now only 10% of the time sucks. Previously, it was 90% of the time that sucked and you had 10% to uh, rest and relax. Now 90% of your time is resting and relaxing and only 10% of it sucks. So you must be doing something right. 
that is everything I have for you today. Team, thank you so, so much for listening. I'm so heartened by the response to the podcast. It's been fantastic. Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. If you listen to me on Spotify, remember to go follow me on YouTube. My name on YouTube is just Corin Bryant. Uh, Big things come in, big things planned. Uh, And if you follow me on YouTube, don't forget to go follow me on Spotify and all of that good stuff. You can find me on Instagram, Corin underscore Bryant underscore. If you want to connect with me and message me on Instagram, please feel free to do so. You absolutely can. And hey, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted me to come and speak on your podcast or on your project, whatever it is that you do, you can email me on Corin Bryant two at gmail.com. All lowercase, all one word. Thank you so much for listening, team. Take care. Be well and stay present.